Welcome to Inquisitive, the show which discusses issues on how to make the best out of, uh, out of our technology. In this seventh of eight episodes dubbed 360 Tech Leadership, we are privileged to have the Chief of uh, Kenya's Defense Forces, General Robert Kiboshi. Military inst institutions have led some of the biggest technology leaps in history, from Turing machines, uh, which became computers in World War II, to mathematical theories like survival ba biases from World War I and even the advent of, of the internet. The military is also facing new uh, information uh, wars, uh, and they are in a scramble for the war of hearts and minds uh, of, of the people they protect and the communities in which they serve. So how are, is the military approaching these new forms of, of warfare, and as well as uh, trying to, to develop innovations uh, for, for future use? The, yes, uh, the, 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 the military, especially the KDF, is, is alive to the fact that uh, innovation uh, is a critical component in uh, increasing uh, the combat power. Uh, for us to be able to enhance our combat power, we must be innovative. Uh, and uh, to a large extent, uh, as you know, we have uh, uh, an institution called the Defense Forces Technical College. Uh, where, by the way, I was a lecturer at some point during my career. And this particular institution uh, develops uh, technology uh, personnel across the entire spectrum, whether you're talking about aeronautics, uh, engineering, uh, whether you're speaking on information technology, uh, marine engineering. Uh, this is where we develop uh, our, our capacity for technology. And uh, to a large extent, uh, we've realized that uh, there are instances where we can leverage on innovation to maximize our ability to deliver uh, our tasks. Uh, and, and this in itself uh, is an area that uh, we need to focus on much, much more moving forward. Uh, you talked about uh, our cooperation with the industry. Uh, it's critical that we cooperate with the academic world, the, the industry, uh, to be able to uh, just not innovate, but also uh, be able to move the innovation into uh, finished, uh, finished products. Uh, and I think one of the key challenges we face uh, is that our industry uh, is not as developed uh, to be able to, uh, to do that. So our idea then is to use our Kenya Ordnance Factory uh, facility in uh, Loret to become uh, the key uh, driver uh, of enhancing the technological innovations coming from the institutions. So technology innovations will become and will continue to become a major uh, key enabler uh, for our uh, combat power. Okay. Yeah, thank you. So, in, in the war for hearts and minds for Kenyans, it's it's a new form of war. It's a it's a it's a form of war that probably requires a different approach. And uh, so, what what would you say are some of the challenges or the key features that uh, the military is is having to embrace in that in in, in that in these new forms of war? Right. I, I think when we talk about um, the winning hearts and minds. Um, which, is a, which is a key component in enhancing our ability to, to succeed uh, in, our, in, in our tasks, is that we currently uh, are deployed in some of the arid uh, and semi-arid areas uh, of our country. And one of the areas that we find ourselves uh, being called upon to support is how do we leverage on our engineering capabilities to assist the communities living in most of these semi-arid and arid areas. And one of our uh, approach is because we have the capacity to be able to provide water uh, as a resource to the communities, our ability to be able to develop um, some of the infrastructure that the communities require, uh, clinics, schools. Our approach is to be able to use our engineering. As I said, we have an engineering capability based uh, around here in Thika, to be able to use technology that we have
to assist the communities. Assisting the communities means you win the hearts and minds. Once you win the hearts and minds, they become a partner with yourself, with ourselves in engaging in the tasks that we undertake. So that is the way we, uh, we see our efforts in winning the hearts and minds uh, of the, po the populace. Now, that has not only uh, been targeting those are that are within the Kenya, within our semi-arid areas, but also those that are across uh, into Somalia, because you are living, we are living within the communities. We have to win their hearts and minds for them to be able to accept us and accept the course of which we are undertaking. So again, provision of those aspects, including uh, medical support, is a continuous process that we undertake. Okay, so there's very clear collaboration between uh, yourselves and civilian efforts and to solve uh, wider issues. Okay. So what would like to, to probably understand as we close uh, this, this part is uh, what are some of the methodologies and technologies that uh, civilians can, can use more wisely or more diligently in ways that uh, enhance patriotism, which is a core value of the military and nation building. So uh, as, as the CDF, you, you are in your, uh, you're rightfully an, a national leader. And so from that perspective, we'd like to, to hear from you in terms of what can the civilians do in order to, to use both technology and other capacities more diligently to, to entrench patriotism, patriotism and for nation building. Exactly. Now, one of the key areas that I think we must, um, as, um, as a society, do, because technology uh, is double-edged, uh, is a double-edged sword, uh, we must be able to, uh, for example, use the social media more effectively to enhance patriotism. As I said, social media uh, is a very important platform, but it's also a double-edged sword in that you can use it to destroy. And I think to a large extent, we should be able to see how best we can leverage on social media uh, platforms to enhance patriotism and loyalty to the nation. There are many uh, instances where social media has been used uh, to not only portray institutions in bad light. For example, when soldiers have been confronted with a situation of uh, engagement with the Al-Shabaab or even our other security forces. And the social media platforms are awash uh, with uh, soldiers uh, that are injured or policemen that are injured. It doesn't add to enhancing our patriotism. You will know, for example, that uh, in these modern uh, larger powers, they use uh, the social media platforms very judiciously. Uh, they don't use it to attack uh, the institutions of government or to portray uh, in bad lights. Because then it affects the morale of those that are engaging uh, in these activities. Even before the families of these uh, security people have uh, known uh, that something has happened to their loved ones. The social media is awash uh, with all sorts of stories. So social media is, is an important platform, but we have to use it judiciously uh, to enhance uh, patriotism. Because if you love your nation, if you are patriotic, you have to be able to protect those that are protecting you. Thank you very much. Okay, then. Thank you very much. And we have come to the end of that episode, learning what we can do to support defense efforts and uh, the innovation and collaboration efforts that our military is, is doing to, to protect us better. Join us in the, in the next episode in which the, the CDF will be giving us his final word on the, issue, on the issue of how to make the most out of technology. Thank you very much.